hasn't had a good start into the season. But what do you think? How can they be dangerous and what's special about Manchester United? Well, I think that it doesn't tell a lot about them because within a match you can't be sure against Man United. That's my experience. In the moment when you think that you dominate or control the match, then it's the most dangerous moment because they can suffer also off the ball. They can defend very deep. They know that they can rely on their great transition game with Rashford, Hoyland with great quality, great pace. So that's why we have to be very attentive, awake and smart how to occupy the spaces. We can't never get let down. I know that the start, if we look at the points uh, into the season of Man United, it's not satisfying. And if you look and analyze the last match, then you see really strong 20 minutes where they could have scored a goal against Brighton. But then to play against Brighton is always a difficult one because they have uh, their own style. Um, many teams have difficulties at them, actually, but they were never out of that match against Brighton. But uh, it's always dangerous, as I said. There's so much quality, individual quality within the team, especially in attack and transition game. They're pretty dangerous. Mr. Tuchel, if we ask about fans and the rivalries, then it's always Man United, 99. Did you see that match? What did you think back then, what happened in the last minutes, seconds? I mean, it won't have any influence or impact on the match, but for the fans, something special. Yes, it is, indeed. It's a match, it was the match against Man United. It's always a big game. Two top teams who face each other, who will face each other in the group stage of the Champions League. It's a back encounter, and we are proud to be part of it and to want to contribute um, to a positive result, to make our fans happy and uh, to lift this rivalry actually as well. But uh, all peaceful and with a lot of respect. But uh, the rivalry, the sporting rivalry, we want to experience that and want to take our fans with us. And uh, the match back then it was extreme. Bayern had so many chances to score the second goal they uh, hit the crossbar, chip balls and uh, a lot of chances. And then through two set pieces, uh, Man United came back and won the match at the end. Speechless, what can I say? Was the last, uh, yeah, the famous last minutes of uh, FC Bayern. It was a very special match and uh, whoever who experienced it and uh, the fans who was there, they will never forget the match, this match. Bayern did their best to leave the pitch actually as the winner. But you have this bitter hour minutes where, uh, yeah, Man United managed to turn the match around. So uh, I think it rose the attention to win then two years later. The, 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 the Champions League. But it must have felt really sad and bad in that moment, losing that final. Mr. Tuchel, decisive phase, a lot of matches. Everyone wants to be part in of the squad. Now Guerrero is back. How do you juggle the team around? Everybody wants to play uh, some will be, of course, disappointed if they don't start. Well, we just have to be clear in our decisions. We have to communicate them. And this is the best for all the players then. And the other way around, on some positions, we don't have enough players. Um, so I, I hope we have difficult decisions to take. And the more difficult uh, the decisions are, the better it is, or the team is the more the competitiveness is within the team. And as you said, 
until the winter break. We will have uh, three matches uh, each week. We need every single player of the squad. Uh, we need them all to have the right mentality. And uh, of course, I have to deal with it. Some players have to accept that they won't start necessarily in one of the other matches. But at Chelsea, one player said in his contract, it doesn't say that uh, he plays as a starter, but that he plays for Chelsea. And uh, he has to behave in each training, in each match. He has to give its best for the club, for Chelsea. And the coach then takes the decide, the decision who he will put up in the starting eleven. Everybody does his best to, um, to be successful and uh, disappointments belong to it as well. We have a lot of input, we have a lot of energy within the team and uh, this is how it has to be. Mr. Tuchel, tomorrow you will sit on the stands. How, how is the communication going? Where will you sit exactly closer to the pitch or the VIP launch, the VIP box? And uh, what about Nagelsmann as the national team coach? Well, he has a high quality. The FP decided to uh, sign him as a national team coach. Uh, the decision was taken. That's the most important part of it. Uh, so you can look forward, so you can look ahead. And um, everything is going to be good. To the first question. Well, I, s I don't know about the whole process. I can drive until the stadium, but I can't enter uh, the pitch. I can't be with the team. Uh, during half time and not before the match and not after the match 15 minutes I'm not allowed to have any contact uh, to the, the team I think there is a box where I can sit from up there it's not nice obviously but we shouldn't discuss about it if it uh, was worth or not but we are strong coaching stuff with my assistant coaches, uh, they will be able to handle it and with the, their energy and their quality. And I will try to contribute with a little bit of energy at least. Mr. Tuchel at FC Bayern, the whole success of the team is then ranked with. Uh, the Champions League of this competition, how far you get here. It's one of the most difficult uh, competitions that you can play. It's one of the nicest competitions to play on Tuesdays, Wednesdays at night, floodlight with all the fans. It's a great privilege that we have, great joy to be part of it. It's not going to be normal for me. I don't want it to become normal. It's just top. It's uh, great to qualify for this competition and not only participate but also to fight for uh, the win, win of the group stage and uh, get as far as possible. This is the aim that we have. Of course it also means pressure uh, but I enjoy it. I have been enjoying it and this is what we wish for. It always starts from the beginning. It's always a new challenge. Also uh, the group phase all the groups, all the opponents within the group from the pot three, pot four, they all have different plans, all different approaches and all the group phase is a difficult one. Tomorrow it starts with the top match of two big teams, two big names in Europe. But um, yeah, the group is going to be complicated and difficult and everything else uh, would surprise me. So we need to be prepared perfectly, have to play at the limit to achieve our aims. We have high expectations, high objectives, and we want to do our best to win this competition. One quick question. Is there one assistant who will lead the other coaches? And then the second question. Jamal Muziala, is he ready for the starting formation? What would it mean for Thomas Müller or can they play together? Yes, of course, they could play together. Jamal is ready to start. 
it's not maybe 90 minutes, but between six, 60 and 75 minutes he can play. We will see if he then starts or if he will be come on later on. But he could play along with Thomas Miller. We have a lot of options in attack, in attacking midfield. We will think about it. We will leave it open until tomorrow. And both my assistant coaches who sit with me on the bench, um, he will, that they will divide the tasks actually uh, as we do it during regular matches. On what it takes to earn a place in your starting lineup, Eric Ten Hag has spoken last week about the standards that he's trying to instill at Manchester United. A few more experience, what are the challenges that that brings as a manager managing such a big club, you know, Chelsea and Bayern Munich and, and Manchester United in terms of Eric Ten Hag? Well, I felt uh, Man United always like a lot of noise going on around Man United. A lot of pundits, a lot of pundits in in the UK are ex players from Man United. So you have uh, you have this legacy from from Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, which creates a lot of pressure, which cr creates a lot of expectations all the time around Manchester United. It just tells you if it's like this. It just tells you in, in that you work in a big club with big expectations, with a big name and. and and a big prior success that uh, all of us, me here in Bayern and and uh, and my colleague in, in Manchester United, we want to achieve the same things and and um, that comes with a job. So I would not say that's an advantage for us. I think it's uh, pretty common around Man United that um, sometimes little things become a bit bigger in this club than in any other club or maybe just the talking about it is a bit more noisy than in, in other clubs. I think within, I can only assume and what I know that uh, they, they coach an uh, um, environment where, where players can, can, can grow, where players can reach their top level. This is what we're trying to do, to, to install principles, to install rules and to, to, to create a winning culture. And um, this is what we all try to do. And this is, uh, is uh, it's um, for me also evident to see if I watch uh, Man United play. The results maybe don't speak the same language, but uh, they are uh, a team full of quality and the club full of uh, full of uh, winning culture. So we will never, never underestimate that. Mit der oben Mark Gabel für RTL. Hallo Herr Tuchel, ähm, auch wenn Sie jetzt morgen nicht Mr. Tuchel, you might not, or you're not sitting on the bench. What do you think will be decisive? Eric Ten Hag knows the club he coached here, the youth club, and you know the Premier League on the other side. What is an advantage? What's an advantage, disadvantage? Well, if you analyze, or if we analyze, there won't be any surprises. It's not really necessarily an advantage that he's trained the second team or that I trained in the Premier League. Everything is changing, styles are changing, systems are changing, transfer periods uh, change uh, teams. But we feel well prepared. Of course, it's not nice that I can't be down on the pitch. It's all about uh, life coaching to take decisions who will come off the pitch, who will enter the pitch, um, are we changing our system? So uh, this is something that will I will be missing tomorrow. And uh, hopefully it's not an advantage that I sit on the stands, but we will see. It's just uh, a one, one thing, but I'm full of confidence and trust uh, my assistant coaches and that the team is well prepared. Um, and that they will do a top job tomorrow at the sideline. It's your turn. I did ask. No, you didn't ask? Okay, then we move up to this row, please. Uh, hi, Thomas. Well, um, I think a lot of people in England expected Harry Kane to be playing in a Manchester United shirt at the start of this summer. Were, were you surprised that United didn't seem to make a, a big bid for him? Uh, he, you know, uh, and, or maybe other English clubs, given he's the captain of England and the all-time record goal scorer for England. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a big thing. We took the skipper of England out of England, out of Premier League. It's... Uh, 
it's a huge it's a huge deal in the in the big transfer and we're very happy i think anyone who's looking for a number nine is uh, would have been happy to have harry in the team anyone in europe because he makes you he makes your team better and he gives you what you expect from a number nine personality goals quality he can drop deep he can uh, he can drop deep on a number 10 position turn and uh, and uh, use the speed of the players around him. He can be. He can arrive in the box in the right timing. He, he has uh, excellent finishing. He's a good. Uh, he's a good penalty taker. So everybody wants wanted to have him. And uh, I am not sure about about what was going on in other clubs. But we are more than happy that uh, finally he took the decision and uh, to to join us and make us better. One row behind. Yes, please. Hi, Thomas. Uh, as the club that got Harry Kane ahead of other clubs such as Manchester United. How much confidence does that give you that he can be the difference maker in games like this, in this competition? He will always be a difference maker in any game. So uh, um, not, only in, not only in the big games and, um, and not, only, not only by goals. Uh, I think he gives us a lot of personality. He will, I think with time, he will make our players around him better. He will, he will learn how to how to make them shine he will learn how to use their skills he will assist also he will not only score and and uh, he will be the difference and um, and he is already the difference um not only him but he is part of us making the difference and uh, that is very very important that's why we that's why we um relied heavily on this transfer that's why we we had a lot of confidence that we are doing the right thing and um, he will prove us right i'm i'm 100 convinced and uh, there is no doubt about it